Where we begin with a fatal shooting of a rap music legend. Taking the life of the man known as Jam Master J. It was a brazen murder on a fall evening in New York City. Jam Master J knew the absolute heights of the hip hop world as a member of the pioneering rap group Run DMC. A music pioneer gunned down in a recording studio. A crime that shocked not only the city, but altered the course of hip hop history. Run DMC, one of the first hip hop groups to cross over into mainstream popularity. I saw Jay, you know, being brought out the studio in the black bag, and it was heartbreaking. Now, a crack in the case that remained cold for nearly 20 years. Two men, police say both known to Jay, have been charged for the shooting. Police alleging all over a drug deal gone wrong. You want to know what crazy person would want to shoot and kill a person as nice as Jam Master J. Now, as a trial looms, a new documentary by WABC TV and executive produced by reporter Darla Miles takes a look at the hunt for the killers and the life and death of Jay Mizell. Titled Set the Record Straight, the Jam Master J case. There was a breakthrough where I really started to I connect with a lot of people involved with the case and people who knew and grew up with Jam Master J, and that really yielded a lot of new information. As rap and hip hop began to break into the mainstream in the 1980s, Run DMC was leading the charge. Tracks like It's Tricky. It's tricky. or Walk This Way, brought a once underground scene to new heights. And behind much of the innovation and sound, their DJ, Jam Master J. J was also an aspiring mogul who would discover talent like Curtis Jackson, AKA 50 Cent, known for classics like In The Club. Guided by Miles' interviews, the doc dissects the life of Jam Master J and his humble beginnings. I never thought that he would grow up to be a DJ. Not when he was little, when I was with him. His mother and my mom are sisters. We did everything together as a family, as a unit, everything. Throughout the doc, it really seems like Jam Master J and the other members of Run DMC really gave back to the New York community. Archival interviews with Jam Master J being an active member of the community. He stayed close to Queens. He was just the guy who just stayed close to his roots, wanted to uplift as many people as he could along the way. Not at any other concerts, but run DMC concerts. Can you come to get a job, register to vote? And these are at rap concerts because we know we're trying to help our kids. Before Run and D actually came on stage, it was Jam Master J that did the scratching. And, you know, he would cut that run, 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 run. And then run would walk on the stage and get the crowd hyped. Jay now was the centerpiece of the stage. Before Run DMC hits the stage, there is Jam Master Jay. And then he going, Jam Master Jay. <laughs> Who was Jam Master Jay? And what did he mean, not just to the hip hop community, but to music as a whole? He was the kind of person who would give you the shirt off of his back. He's the kind of person who tried to uplift everyone along the way. When the renaissance of hip hop started in the 80s, it was a really natural matriculation for him because he was already so creatively inclined. After catapulting to the limelight and carving out a place for hip hop in the modern music world with the first ever platinum record in the genre, Jay eventually pivoted to behind the soundboard, running his own record label as an executive. He was such a creative visionary when it came to Run DMC. So becoming a producer was again, a natural matriculation. It was a natural progression for him to kind of evolve with the industry. And that's another reason why this documentary really wanted to chronicle not only what happened with the murder investigation, but just with his career, because he was such uh, a high impact figure. Then on October 30th, 2002, Jam Master J was at work in this recording studio in Queens, New York, when two men arrived. They had to be buzzed into the studio. And you have to understand these two, these two individuals were known to Jay. Um, there was trust there. Jam Master J was in the studio in the back. He was playing video games with Tony Rincon. Lydia was at the front desk when she got buzzed. She buzzed two people in that she knew. The killer passed a total of four security cameras on the way to the murder, at the door, up the stairs, and in the hallway leading to the studio. Before he entered the lounge, the shooter pulled a 40 caliber gun, put on a ski mask, and knocked over a woman as he opened the door. 
Before Jay could know what happened to him, they shot him. And in that sudden moment, Jay would join the ranks of hip hop royalty, taken out too soon by gun violence. Despite his celebrity, he wasn't immune to the high levels of homicide and lack of regard for, for life within our communities, especially young black male life that took his life, that took Tupac, that took Biggie, that took Pop Smoke, that takes Nipsey Hussle, that, you know, it goes on, on and on. For years, Jam Master Jay's murder remained unsolved. We need the community to come forward. And, uh, you know, these district attorneys, they, they need witnesses. They, they want people to, to talk to us. But the case finally reopened. We kept asking about it. We kept uh, uh, debriefing prisoners. And we kept, continued to inquire about any information or uh, intel that we could get about the case. And then we got some in 2015. And it, it was, it, that's when it started getting legs. And in August of 2020, charges were finally filed against two men, Ronald Tenard Washington and Carl Lil D. Jordan Jr. A grand jury returned an indictment uh, here in the Eastern District of New York, charging uh, two defendants for their involvement in the murder of Jason Mizell, uh, who I think you all know uh, was known as uh, Jam Master J. Apparently, um, Tenard Washington was buzzed in. At that point, he pulled out a gun. He put everybody on the floor. Paul Jordan came in and then went, walked right over to Jay and fired around immediately without any conversation at all. Carl Jordan Jr. and Ronald Washington were both said to have known Jay prior to his murder. Police believe the shooting may have revolved around a botched drug deal, a point some in Jay's family still take issue with. My uncle would never do drugs. He never had to do that. He never had that image. We had talked to people in his life, good people in his life. They were telling us that he was, uh, that he was complaining about uh, his, his financial debt, his debt to the IRS, um, his troubles that he was having paying things. Both Washington and Jordan are facing life in prison and possibly the death penalty. They have pled not guilty. And, and now we're simply waiting for them to go on trial. And as spectacular as Jam Master Jay was in life, in death, a death connected to a drug deal has really ended with a whimper. In the end, there was no big mystery. These were two guys, prosecutors allege, wanted a piece of illegal action. When Jam Master Jay cut them out, they turned a gun on him. Is there any closure with this news? Closure is a very tricky word, but if you would want to characterize it as closing the gap on the investigation, there are just as many questions today as there were 18 years ago. The documentary set the record straight. The Jam Master Jay case is now on Hulu. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.